Hello everyone, thank you for joining me today. My name is Angelo and in this talk I'm going to highlight the risks of IoT and how you can properly deploy IoT in your network. So you probably already know what IoT means and for those of you that don't, so IoT is a network of physical objects or things which can be embedded with sensors, software and uh, other technologies for the purpose of connecting and exchanging data with other devices and systems over the network. While this might sound fun and all, so you can do a lot of things with IoT or the Internet of Things, those also have their security issues or risks. So uh, I'm going to highlight some of the major risks associated with IoT devices. So IoT or the Internet of Things is a network of physical objects or things which are embedded with sensor software and other technologies for the purpose of connecting and exchanging data with other devices and systems over the network or over the internet. There may be a lot of uses for IoT devices, for example, you might be using uh, some lights which are remotely controlled or you're using a thermostat for your home or your router which is still an IoT device. So basically all the devices that are inside a network which use the internet basically. So. For those of you that use these IoT devices, you might be thinking, what's the worst that can happen with these devices? Well, that the risks associated with them. So I'm going to start with a few of them. I'm going to list some of these issues. So the first one would be, there are a lot of manufacturers around and most of them lack the compliance. So basically the primary source of most IoT issues is that manufacturers do not spend enough money and time and resources on security. For example, uh, on many manufacturer devices, they might have weak or guessable passwords or sometimes even hard-coded passwords that you cannot change anymore after using the device. Some of them may have hardware issues which makes it easier for them to be attacked. Uh, most of them lack a secure mechanism for them to be updated so they cannot receive new patches and new security patches over the air. Uh, many of them use old and unpatched embedded operating systems and also software and many times they have insecure data storage and transferring. Another issue is the lack of user knowledge and awareness. So over the, years, over the years people have learned how to respond or not to respond to spam emails or to phishing emails. They also know how to perform virus scans on their PCs or secure the networks with strong passwords. But IoT is also a new technology, so people do not know, do know much about it yet. So tricking a human, most of the time, the easiest way is to gain access to a network. So a type of IoT security that is often overlooked is social engineering attacks. So instead of you trying to target a device, you're just targeting a human and using the IoT. As I mentioned above, manufacturers usually do not spend enough time and resources on these devices. So there, here comes the device update management, which is also one, another security risk associated with IoT devices. So they usually might have insecure software or firmware. But even though a manufacturer can sell a new device with all the latest security updates, some new vulnerabilities will always come out daily almost. So they have to be updated right after these new vulnerabilities are discovered and also fixed. But it's hard because compared with smartphones or other devices which can get automatic updates, some of them continue to be used without these necessary updates. Another risk is that during an update a device will send its backup out to the cloud and will also suffer a short downtime. So if the connection is unencrypted and also the files are unprotected, some hacker can steal the sensitive information. So another risk associated with these IoT devices is the lack of physical hardening. What this means is that all, even though some devices can continue to work without the intervention of uh, humans or users, they need to be physically uh, secured from outer threats. So sometimes these devices can be located in remote uh, locations for some long stretches of time and they can be physically tampered with, for example, for, from something as easy as a USB with malware inside. So even though the physical security of the IoT device begins from the manufacturer, it also needs to be uh, taken care of by the users, we need, which need to physically secure them. So some smart motion sensor or video camera that sits outside your house can be tampered with if, if it's not adequately protected. So some single IoT device which is uh, infected with malware does not really pose any big real threat. It's only when a huge collection of them that can bring down anything. 
So to perform a botnet attack, a hacker needs to create an army of bots by infecting all of them with malware and then directing them towards their main target. So uh, the problem is that these IoT devices are highly vulnerable to malware attacks. They do not get the regular software updates that a computer might get. So they are quickly turned into what are called infected zombies. And they are used as weapons to send an incredible amount of traffic towards uh, a target that some hacker wants to attack. So what's more is that these botnets can pose a great security risk for electrical grids, manufacturing plants, transportation systems, water treatments, facilities, which can threaten a huge number of people. So for example, a, t a hacker could target a cooling and heating system at the same time, so he can create spikes on a power grid. So in case of a big scale attack, these hackers can also create a nationwide power outage. Another issue which I'd actually rank higher is industrial espionage and eavesdropping. So these hackers can just uh, use the devices for anything other than spying. They can perform attacks to demand some ransom money. So invading privacy is another prominent IoT security issue. So spying and intruding through IoT devices is a real problem because a lot of uh, different sensitive data can be compromised and then can be used against its owner. So one should not forget that many IoT devices record user information, whether it is health equipment, smart toys, wearable, etc. So on an industrial level, a company's big data can be collected by hackers, so they can expose some very sensitive business information. And also some countries have started to ban some specific IoT devices with security problems. For example, uh, the United States has issued a ban on Huawei, the Chinese company, uh, for all their uh, 5G network appliances and all other IoT devices they are creating. Another issue with IoT devices is the risk of getting your devices hijacked, which is through ransomware. So ransomware is one of the nastiest, nastiest malware types that have ever existed. They do not really destroy your sensitive files, they just block access to them via a type of encryption. So the hacker who has infected the device will demand a fee so they can give you the decryption key to unlock these files. So uh, ransomware itself is also evolving and IoT devices with poor security can become targets as well. So with IoT devices, uh, d your data is always on the move. So most IoT devices can extract and then collect information from the external environment. So these devices can be a smart thermostat, HVAC, TVs, medical devices, but sometimes these devices send the data they collect to the cloud so they don't use any encryption so a hacker can gain immediate access to a medical IT device so they can gain control over it and then alter the data that they collect. They can be used to send fake signals which in turn can make some health practitioners take actions that may damage the health of their patients. Another issue with IoT devices which are turned into bots is crypto mining so a lot of crypto cryptocurrencies demand uh, colossal CPU and GPU resources, so these uh, IoT devices are used with the goal of not creating damage but to mine some cryptocurrency. So uh, Monero, which is one of the first open source cryptocurrencies, was the first to be mined using these infected IoT devices, for example through video cameras. Although video camera by itself doesn't have much processing power, an army of them really does. So they also pose a great threat to the crypto market because they have the potential to flood and to disrupt the entire market in one single attack. So these are not the only security related issues with IoT devices, but there are some ways how you can protect your IoT devices. So first of all, you, th you should think carefully of what devices you need to be connected and when do you need them to be connected. For example, do you need a smart speaker to be turned on when you're away from your home or where you're sleeping? Or uh, does your coffee maker need to be on after you've already had your coffee? Uh, do the sensors where you work at uh, be on when the machine itself isn't working and the workers are home. So consider all of this when you're trying to add a new IoT device in your in your network. So you shouldn't have it automatically be on all the time. Figuring you'll get back to it later. 
what you can also do is create a separate network just for your IT devices. So if a hacker manages to uh, break in, they will only be limited in only this separate system that you have created. So make sure that the router on your network is secure by choosing a strong password. You can also update the firmware of and software of your router regularly and close some ports that are commonly used for transmission of data. Another thing you can do is please, please, please use some strong and unique passwords for all your IT devices, just as you should on all your computers, accounts, smartphones, applications, etc. So if you're having problem remembering all of these passwords, you should just choose use a password manager. Also try to use one which is offline. I can recommend KeePass for that. And you should make sure to change all the default passwords that come with these IoT devices. So hackers know what these are. They can just check online for a list of all these default users and usernames and passwords. And they can check if they're still active when they're trying to uh, penetrate your network. So if any of your devices uh, also supports multi-factor authentication, you, you should enable that too. You should also check your IoT devices regularly for security updates. So they may have some firmware upgrades which address vulnerabilities or they have, might have some new features on the software updates. They might now support multi-factor authentication or if they have some new security feature which can also you can take advantage of. As a last step, you can also use some anti-malware programs that are aimed towards IoT devices, even though I personally do not really recommend using these. So uh, just make sure that you separate all of these IoT devices from other uh, devices in your network. So if you just contain them all in one single network, they won't be able to do much harm. So some tips and tricks on what I'd recommend before you try to deploy your own IT network is to get some devices that uh, have good reviews, have a good price, so do not get the cheapest out of all of them, but also do not get the priciest of all of them, or the most expensive one. You can also use, uh, you can start with simple devices such as uh, Raspberry Pi, which costs around 30 to 40 euros. You can get some Orange Pi, which is kind of the same, but Orange Pi is fully open source, unlike Raspberry Pi. There's also a lot of other devices that you can use to automate things. For example, you can get an Arduino, Arduino uh, Zero. Uh, you can do a lot of things with them. They, are, uh, they have a simple syntax. You can use the C language to create some code for them. You can use them to change the intensity of the lights. You can use them to uh, lock and unlock the door and do a lot of other things around your house. So uh, basically, uh, just set all of these devices on a separate network. So make sure they do not uh, connect with anything other than the, uh, those uh, devices inside that network. So you might lose some internet connectivity, but I think that's uh, the best way to use these IoT devices because you never know if they are uh, safe or secure enough. So a good way would be just to use them from your local network and not via the internet. Thank you, Angela, for your talk, telling us the risks of IoT and the proper deployment. Uh, would there be something else that you would like to add? Uh, there's a lot of things that I could add. I could go on for hours in that topic, but I guess uh, the majority of things were already said in the talk. So if you have any questions or if you want to create your own IoT network in your house or anywhere else, you can just ask me now or contact me later. Uh, what, be, uh, uh, what would you suggest for a, a normal person who doesn't know much about IoT? Uh, how could they kind of start learning and what would you suggest them to try first, you know, to kind of get the idea of it and the essential stuff? Sure. So I first I'd suggest using uh, some cheap devices, for example, a Raspberry Pi Zero. They are pretty cheap. Uh, you can get a few of them and then experiment. There are some, a lot of online uh, resources and material regarding a Raspberry Pi. Uh, you can create some small projects, for example, host your own uh, file server or uh, simple other network stuff for your home. You can use to create a NAS, network attached storage. 
so you can back up your files. Uh, so uh, basically there are a lot of uh, uses for Raspberry Pis. Uh, you can get some lights, for example, Philips lights. You can connect them with the Raspberry Pi and then control them from your phone. They're pretty simple. You don't really need to know coding for these. So this is what I'd suggest starting with. Okay, and since we are here, what about people who kind of know more? Would you suggest some uh, other microcontroller, something that people could put uh, their hands on more, something that is a bit, maybe a bit harder to maintain? Uh, maybe something that you have tried? Uh, I suggest Arduinos. Yeah, sure. I suggest Arduinos since you can stack them up like in a tower. You can create a lot of things with them. Um, I'd probably suggest people to use a, what's called a pie hole for their network. So pie hole, it's basically like a firewall kind of thing. So you can block all the advertisements, all the uh, spamming, scamming, tracking links. And you connect that device, uh, it could be a Raspberry Pi or an Arduino with your uh, router, and then you apply all this ad blocking uh, on the entire network. Uh, a lot, uh, other project I'd suggest, um, for example, doing a, a kind of switch so you can lock and unlock your door. I wouldn't suggest you to use it for your like uh, outside door, so not the front door, probably just the doors inside your house. Um, I mentioned the lights before, so you can automatically, so you can use some sensors to turn on and turn off the lights when you leave the room. Yeah, so these are, I guess, a few uses for these IoT devices. So all of these should also stay in a separate network, as I said in the talk. So if they don't access the internet, they're much safer. You can use them just locally. You don't need to control the lights, for example, uh, from the internet. I understand. What do you think of the future of the internet of things like? Uh, will it affect humans quite a lot uh, in their daily lives? I know it already has, but uh, in the next like five years, uh, do you think it will improve a lot and the percentage of use will kind of rise a lot or it will go constant? What's your thought? So with the rise of 5G, uh, a lot of things can be automated and IoT devices are also, you can say, they are also sensors that are used in cars like Tesla. So I predict the, the, their usage will grow a lot in the next 10 years or so, but I'm afraid more security risks will come with them and uh, they'll become harder to maintain and to fully secure for people. So while they might improve the lives of people, they're just a conformity. They're not really uh, something you need for your daily life. So I'd say just use it carefully and don't overdo it. Okay, thank you, Angelo. It was a pleasure to yeah. have you with us here. Thank you.